four pages of the most high. So tonight's topic is called the spirit of Cain. Okay, that's tonight's topic. The spirit of Cain. Let's open up. Let's open up with the book. Let's open up with the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 33. We're going to start at verse 10. Start 33 verse 10. Pay close attention. Okay. Take note. Start 33 verse 10. Let's start there. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 10. Come on. And all men are from the ground, and mm -hmm. Adam was created of earth. And Adam was created of earth. Get Genesis 2, verse 7. It says, and all men are from the ground, and Adam was created of earth. Okay? Let's get there. This is uh, actually, this is a heavy thing that we just read. Hmm. Read the verse again, verse 10. Let me delve into this a little bit. Read again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 10. Come on. And all men are from the ground. Mm -hmm. And Adam was created of earth. It says, all men are from the ground, and Adam was created of earth. Hmm. That's some heavy stuff what he's saying right there. Give me Hosea 12 and 10. You know what? No, give me Job 11, verse 6. Job 11, verse 6. Job chapter 11, verse 6. Let's read that thing. Okay. The book of Job, chapter 11, verse 6. Go ahead. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom. Mm -hmm. That they are double to that which is. That they are double to that which is. The secrets of wisdom, meaning the scriptures have doubled, triple, more than three levels of meanings to them. He says the scriptures have double meaning. Go back to Sarah 33, read verse 10 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 10. Go ahead. And all men are from the ground. Mm -hmm. And Adam was created of earth. He says, oh, and all men are from the ground, and Adam was created of earth. Meaning from the dust of the ground. Okay? It says, and Adam was created of earth. We know Adam was created from the dust of the ground as the first man on earth. Now get that in Genesis 2 verse 7. Genesis 2 verse 7. I want to show you something what it says. What Sarah is saying. Genesis 2 verse 7. Read what you got. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Come on. And the Lord God for man of the dust of the ground. Mm -hmm. And breathing to his nostrils the breath of life. Come and on. man became a living soul. So that part right there. He says what? It says, but the, and the Lord God for men of the dust of the ground. That's what he read. All men are from the ground. Okay? It says what? And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. You see what he's, he's saying right there? It says, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 2, real quick. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 2. Okay? Adam was given the commandments of the Most High God. That is what was breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life. No, it's not talking about oxygen, because everybody has that. But what that what everybody did not have is the breath of life, which is what was given to our forefather Adam. We what you got? Proverbs 7, verse 2. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 2. Come Keep on. my commandments and live, and my mm -hmm. law as the apple of thine eye. You see that thing? Keep my commandments and live and live. What gives us life is the laws of God. So Adam was given the laws of God. Wisdom. Watch this. Give me Psalms 85, verse 11. Psalms 85. I'm going to show you what the right is saying right here. Because it says, all men are from the ground, and Adam was created of earth. We're going to explain that part right there. Psalms 85, verse 11. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 85, verse 11. Go ahead. Read. Who shall spring out of the earth? Stop and right righteousness truth shall come down from heaven. Truth is as truth shall spring out of the earth. Truth shall spring out of the earth. What is the truth? Get that in Psalms 190, verse 142. Let's see what the truth is that will spring out of the earth. Okay? Psalms 119, verse 142. Let's read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Come on. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law mm. is the truth. Thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. Go back to Psalms 85, verse 11 again. 
the book of Psalms, chapter 85, is 11. Come on. Two shall spring out of the earth. You see that? The laws of God, they come from the earth. So what is the earth making reference to first and foremost? The laws of God, God's commandment. That's what he's talking about. The Bible, the scriptures. You understand? The precepts that are written in this book. So when it says all men are from the ground and Adam was created of earth because he was breathed into him the breath of life and Adam became a living soul. You understand? That's what we're reading here. Go ahead. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. Righteousness shall look down from heaven because the righteous, righteousness, what is righteousness? Let's get that. You told me chapter 6 verse 25. Let's see what it means. What is righteousness? Okay, come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 25. Mm -hmm. And it shall be our righteousness. Right. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he has commanded us. You see that? As he has commanded us. So, so righteousness is the commandment of the Most High God. It says, shall look down from heaven. So, because the wisdom of the Lord comes from where? It comes from on high. You understand? Watch this. Get that in James 3. James chapter 3. Watch this. James chapter 3, read verse 17. Okay. The book of James chapter 3, verse 17. Go ahead. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. You see that? The wisdom that is from above is first pure. That way, what is that wisdom? The laws of God. You understand? Is the righteousness shall look down from heaven. Read. Then peaceable, uh -huh. gentle, and easy to be entreated. Go ahead. Full of mercy and good fruits. Go ahead. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. You see that thing? That's the wisdom that comes from the most like God. It comes from above. That's what we read in Psalms 85, verse 7. Go back to Sarah 33, verse 10 now, again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 10. Go ahead. And all men are from the ground. Mm -hmm. And Adam was created of earth. Because he was breathed into him the breath of life. The earth goes into what? God's commandments. Go ahead. In much knowledge, the Lord had divided them. Stop right there. So it says, in much knowledge, the Lord has divided the man that he created from the ground in much knowledge. What is the knowledge? Get that in Malachi 2 verse 7. So let's see what is the knowledge, okay? The knowledge comes from the earth in verse 10. So keep that in mind. Read that in Malachi 2 verse 7. The book of Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Go ahead. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Mm -hmm. And they should seek the law at his mouth. They should what? And they should seek the law at his mouth. And they should seek the law at his mouth. So the laws of God is the knowledge of the most High God. Go ahead. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. He is the messenger. Okay, so go back to where he was at. Sarah 33 verse 11. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 33 verse 11. Read. In much knowledge the Lord hath divided them. So in much knowledge, because of the wisdom, the Lord has divided the man he created on earth. Go ahead. And made their ways diverse. He made their ways diverse. That's why we differ. You understand? In terms of what? Our characters and all that. He says he made their ways diverse because of what? The knowledge that he displays, he displays upon us. Right? Some of them have he blessed and exalted. Stop right there. So remember, this goes into, this is the creation account. He says, some of them have been blessed and exalted. Who is that talking about? The sons of Adam. That's us. We, we were made and we were blessed and exalted. Okay, go ahead. Meaning what? The most powerful people on earth. That's us. Adam's descendants. Right? And some of them have he sanctified. And some of them have he what? And some of them have been sanctified. And some of them have been sanctified. All this, give me that in John 17, verse 17. Is that some of them have been sanctified. He blessed and exalted and sanctified. Okay, come on. John 17, verse 17. The book of John, chapter 17, verse 17. Read. 
Sanctify them through thy truth. Mm -hmm. Thy word is truth. To sanctify means to cleanse. So the Lord cleansed us with his word, with his wisdom. So he's telling you from the time of creation, there are those spirits that were created for good and there are spirits that were created for evil. You understand? At the end of the class, you have to decide which one you are. You need to examine yourself to see which spirit are you. Are you the spirit that was ordained for evil or are you the spirit that was ordained for good? Go back to track 33. Because chapter 33, verse 12. Right. Some of them have he blessed and exalted. Mm -hmm. And some of them have he sanctified. Right. And set near himself. Is it, is it that? And he set near himself. He set near himself. Go ahead. But some of them have he cursed and brought mm -hmm. low. You see that part right there? And some of them have he cursed and brought low. I mean, somebody got to play the devil. Somebody has to play the devil. That's why I said some of them had cursed and brought law. Go ahead. And turned out of their places. And turned out of their places, meaning what? They are ordained for evil and death and destruction. Go ahead. As the clay is in the potter's hand, mm -hmm. to fashion it at his pleasure, so man is in the hand of him that made him to render to them as black and Hmm. Read, read that verse again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 13. Come on. As the clay is in the potter's hand, to fashion it at his pleasure. Mm -hmm. So man is in the hand of him that made him, to render to them as liketh him best. You see that thing? So the potter in this, in this context is talking about the most High God. He will fashion the clay according to his pleasure. He says, likewise, Man is in the hand of him that made him, which is the most high, to render to them as like it in fact. You understand? So you cannot say, but why did you make me like this? No, that's how the Lord like it, like it you best. Guess what? That's why you made that thing. Go ahead. Verse 14, watch this. He's going to make it clear how the Lord creates spirit. How the spirit, was, the, the spirit that we created from the beginning. Watch this. Go ahead. Good is set against evil. You see that thing? So when it says some of them had he blessed and exalted and sanctified and brought and set near himself, is that some he kept and brought low and turned out all of their places. That's good versus evil. That's the spirit that I created. Read that again, verse 14. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 14. Go ahead. Good is set against evil mm -hmm. and life against death. Read. So is the godly against the sinner, and the sinner against the godly. You see that thing? In the world, they call it the yin and the yang. Yin and yang. Good and evil. You understand? Go ahead. So look upon all the works of the Most High. Mm -hmm. And there are two and two, one against another. He says, all the, all the works of the Most High God, they are made in pair. Two and two, one against another. Good versus evil. You understand? The godly versus the sinner, or, and so on and so forth. That's how the Lord created all the spirits on earth. Watch this. Now, give me the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 7. 1 Peter 2, verse 7. Okay, the spirits, the way they were created from the get-go, they were, they, were, they were those that were going to be the good guys, they are those that are going to be the evil guys. They, their job is to do evil on this earth. Watch this. Read that. 1 Peter 2, verse 7. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 7. Come on. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto that? them. Stop. Hold on. It says, unto you, therefore, who believe, he is precious. The he is Christ. That's precious in our sight. Because we believe. That's why we keep the commandment. Read that again. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 7. Read. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. Mm hmm but unto them which are disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed. Stop right there. It says, but unto them which be disobedient. So it's letting you know, those which believe, they are obedient to the laws of God. Those who don't believe, they are disobedient to God's commandment. That's what it's telling you right there. So when you, when you believe, it means you, you are obedient to the law. When you are disobedient, that means 
you don't keep the laws of the Most High. Read that again, verse 7. First book of Peter, the 2, verse 7. Go ahead. And to you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. Mm -hmm. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed. Mm -hmm. The builders, the builders is, is, is making reference to the leaders of Israel, the scars and Pharisees that rejected Christ. Yes, go ahead. The same is made the head of the corner. The same is made the leader of Israel. You understand our king, our commander in chief. Go ahead. And a stone of stumbling. Mm. And a rock of offense. Come on. Even to them which stumble at the word, really? being disobedient, mm -hmm. where unto also they were appointed. Now that's some heavy stuff right here. Is there a stone of stumbling, meaning to the builders, to those that don't believe, those that be disobedient, a rock of offense? Because what offend our people is what the laws of God offend our people. Our people who don't, don't want to change, the Bible is a book of change. The reason why you see how people get mad, they get offended, is because they, they don't want to change. They are holding on to the evil that they are doing. They are in love with their lust. Okay, go ahead. It says what? Um, a rock of offense even to them that what? And a rock of offense even to them who stumble at the word. Even to them that stumble at the word. Meaning they, what? they don't understand what the Bible says. And part of the reason why they don't understand is because they are not obedient to what the Bible says. They don't want to humble down to that say the law, right? Being disobedient. Being disobedient. You see that? The reason why they are offended is because they are disobedient to the laws of God. That's why they are offended. Right? Well, and to also they were appointed. They were appointed from the beginning of time. Before the Lord said, let there be light, they were appointed to be disobedient. So you have to ask yourself, which spirit are you? Are you the spirit that it was appointed from before when the Lord said, let there be light? Were you appointed to be disobedient to the laws of God? Or you were appointed to be obedient to God's commandments? You have to examine yourself to see which spirit you are. If you find yourself with stumbling at basic stuff, you keep repeating the same things over and over, even though many councils are coming up, you are appointed to. Understand it. Okay. Watch this. Give me the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 7, verse 20. 2nd Ezra, chapter 7, verse 20. 2nd book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 20. Go ahead. For there be many that perish in this life mm -hmm. because they despise the law of God that is set before them. Now, these are the ones that are appointed. You understand? They're going to perish because why? They despise the law of God that is set before them. Go ahead. For God has given straight commandment to such as came. The straight commandment, the word straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, straight, meaning strict, strict commandment to such as came to what? To hear the word and repent. Go ahead. What they should do to live, mm -hmm. even as they came. Read. Really? And what they should observe to avoid punishment. You see that thing? So those that were appointed to be disobedient, they are not going to keep the laws of God to avoid punishment. In fact, they are glutton for punishment. They're going to keep doing evil so that they can get the judgment of the Most High God. Go ahead. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him. They were not obedient unto the law. Read. But spake against him but and commanded. And how, how do they speak against the law? Because they've never met the most like God. Neither do they may, have they met Christ in his life. We have not seen it. But it says, it says what? It says what verse we read? It says what they should do to avoid punishment. Um, nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but speak against him. How do they speak against the law? They despise the word that is being brought to them by the prophet. They hate that thing. You understand? Read that verse again. Second book of Esther, chapter 7, verse 22. Go ahead. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but, this, but spake against him and imagined vain things. You see that thing? They speak against the law. They imagine vain things against the most high God. How do they do that? Because when the prophets bring the word, they reject it. They speak evil of the prophets. 
but they are speaking evil of the men that send the prophets to come and teach. Go ahead. And deceive themselves by their wicked deeds. Mm. And said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his ways. Meaning the Lord don't know that don't, he don't know nothing. Okay. When you teach them this is what the Bible says, it says, that's not my king. That's not my God. The God in my heart, he doesn't say that because they reject what the word of God says. They believe in, they so they say they believe in God, but they reject the word of God. So they don't believe in the God of heaven and earth. They believe in Satan. Okay, come on. But his law have they despised mm -hmm. and denied his covenant. You see that? They denied the old and the new covenant. That's why it says covenant. Plural. Go ahead. In his statutes have they not been faithful mm -hmm. and have not performed his works. Have not performed his works, meaning his laws. Because when you're performing something, that's an action. You actually have to do it. You understand? Love is an action word. Likewise, to show the Lord that you love him, you have to do what he says. Wait. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 24. 25. But his law have they despised and denied his covenant. In his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. And Wait. therefore, Ezra, for the empty are empty things. Mm -hmm. And for the full are the full things. Read that again, verse 25. This is the key. Yeah. Ezra, chapter 7, verse 25. So pay attention here. The key, the key of this, what we just read, we were, we were leading up to this, verse 25. Read that again, verse 25. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 25. Read. And therefore, Ezra, for the empty are empty things. Mm -hmm. And for the full are the full things. So what is the Lord doing? What is the Lord showing Ezra? The Lord is drawing the line between good and evil. It says, for the empty are empty things, and for the full are full things. This is a hard thing. Let's understand what it means. Get Revelation 22 verse 10. For the empty are empty things, and for the full are full things. Revelation 22, let's start at verse 10. Watch this. This is what he's saying. The book of Revelation chapter 22 verse 10. Go ahead. And he said unto me, mm -hmm. See not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Meaning, for the time of the Lord's return is at hand. Okay, come on. He says, Therefore, don't steal the understanding of this book. Read. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Yeah, so, so, guess what? The empty are empty things. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. So he's drawing the line between good and evil. Those who were appointed to do good, those who that were appointed to do evil. They were born to be the devil. Okay, read that part again. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 11. Read. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Mm -hmm. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. For the empty are empty things. For the empty are empty things. That's what he's talking about here. Go ahead. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. You see that thing? He that is righteous, let him remain righteous. Because he was appointed to be righteous. So the fool are full things. Go ahead. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. You see that thing? He's saying that's what he's that John the Revelator is making it plain what Ezra was saying. You understand? So go back. Second Ezra, chapter 7. Read verse 25 again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 25, verse 25. And therefore, Ezra, for the empty are empty things. Mm -hmm. You know and what? Hmm. Go back to Revelation. Read verse 12. Revelation 22, verse 12. Read verse 12. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 12. Wait. Right. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Mm hmm Give every man according to his work shall be. You see that to give every to give every man according to his work shall be, whether it be good, whether it be evil. That's what he's talking about right there. Give me that in um, Ecclesiastes, okay? Ecclesiastes chapter twelve. Ecclesiastes chapter twelve. Read the last verse. Ecclesiastes chapter twelve and verse start of verse thirteen. Twelve, uh, chapter twelve, verse thirteen and fourteen together. Read that. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Come on. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. You see that? That's the whole purpose upon this earth. If you ever wanted to know what is your purpose upon this earth is to fear God and to keep his commandments. Go ahead. For God shall bring every work into judgment mm -hmm. and every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You see that? The most that God is going to bring every work into judgment, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Go back to 2nd chapter 7 verse 25. So the Lord is explaining to us um, the spirits that are created. There are those that are appointed to die. There are those that are appointed to be righteous. There are those that are appointed to just be the devil. You understand? So you have to determine which one you are. Understand that. Okay, it's very important for us to understand that because if we don't fight to keep these commandments, and guess what? You always go back into your sins and all that. You you are you examine yourself because you could be appointed for that. That could be your lot. Understand that. Watch this. Give me um yeah, second as a seven to twenty five. I want to go somewhere else in there. Okay, read that. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 25. Read. Right. And therefore, Ezra, for the empty are empty things, and for the full are the full things. For the empty are empty things, that's talk about there is a he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Him that is filthy, let him be filthy still. But he says, and the full are, it says, and for the full are full things. Him that is holy, let him be holy still. Him that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Okay, watch this. Give me that in uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 1. You know what? Before you get there. Hmm. Yeah, get that for me. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. You know what? Before we go there, go back to Sarah 33. Sarah 33. I think I want to read verse 12 again. Sarah chapter 33. Let's read verse yeah, read verse 12. One more again. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 12. Wait. Right. Some of them hath he blessed and exalted. Mm -hmm. And some of them hath he sanctified. You see and that? Himself. So those that were blessed and exalted are those that are sanctified. When were they sanctified? Those that are blessed and exalted. When were they sanctified? Hold this. Drop that. Go to Jeremiah 1, verse 5. I'm going to show you those that are just. Those that are righteous, those that are um, holy, they are going to be holy still because they were blessed and exalted and sanctified. The question is, when were they sanctified? Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Read that. The book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Go ahead. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. You see that? It says before, not when, during. No, it says before. I formed you in your mother's belly. I knew thee. When did the Lord know us? Before we came into the physical realm, we were in the spiritual. Before your mother and father came together, your spirit already existed with the Lord from the beginning. Read that again, verse 5. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5. Read. Right? Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Mm hmm. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. You see that thing? It says, I sanctified you to be a what? Go ahead. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You see that thing? So we were born prophets. We were, we were, we were, we were, we were, we are, we are prophets even before our mothers and fathers came together. The Lord already ordained us in the spirit world. Watch this. Give me second Ezra. Chapter 9, verse 18. Second Ezra 9, verse 18. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 18. Go ahead. And now, when I prepared the world, which was not yet made. Stop right there. When I prepared the world, which was not yet made. Remember, the Lord declared the end from the beginning. He says, when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, what happened? Even for them to dwell in that in that now live, no man spake against me. You see what he's saying? 
It says, listen, when I prepared the world, that's the world of Israel, which was not yet made, even to them that dwell in, that now live, no man speak of Jesus. Meaning what? The spirit, there's no spirit said, no, I don't agree. All the spirit, we agree to what was ordained for us before our mothers and fathers came together. Whatever the Lord commanded us, guess what? We all agree. So in the spirit world, you agree to play the devil. When you are now on earth, you survive. When you are in the spirit world, you are ordained to be a prophet. Now when you come into the truth, you understand, okay, that's my law. You understand that? In the spirit world. But now everybody has done forgotten now. Go ahead. Verse 19. For then everyone obeyed. He says, because then everyone, everyone obeyed. All the spirits that you see walking around this earth, they all obey. Or yes, I'm going to play the devil. I'm going to play the righteous. I'm going to play the prophet. Yes, it is everyone obey. Go ahead. But now the manners of them which are created in this world, in this world that is made, are corrupted by a perpetual seed. That perpetual seed is going, is going into after when Adam and Eve had sinned. Okay? Read when sin entered into the world through the black woman. Go ahead. And by a law which is unsearchable, read themselves. Because now we have read ourselves of the laws of God. That's what it says right there. Okay, go ahead. So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the devices that were come into it. The devices, the evil devices that man has created now, has made. Get that in Genesis 6. Genesis chapter 6. Let's read verse 5. Book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Go ahead. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. You see that? God saw that the wickedness of man, of man, of man. Come on. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You see that? Because of the wickedness of man, that's what Ezra is seeing here. That's why you see the world now has rid themselves of the laws of God because of the wickedness of man. Go back to 2nd Ezra 9, verse 20 again. 2nd book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 20. Read. So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the devices that were come into it. So the evil devices that came into the world was through the wickedness of man. Go ahead. And I saw and spared it greatly. Mm -hmm. That's messy. Go ahead. Me, and have kept me a grape of the cluster. Right. And a plant of a great people. That's going into the sons of God, which now they are, we are called the children of Israel. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, I, and I saw and spared it greatly. How did the Lord say he sent Christ in the last days? He sent Christ in the last days to die for the 12 tribes of Israel to redeem us back to the Father. That's why it says he spared it greatly. And have kept me a grape of the cluster, meaning they left, and a plant of a great people, those that are keeping the commandments. Go ahead. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. Stop right there. He says, Let the multitude, the multitude is talking about the multi, a plant of a great people, the multitude, meaning the 12 tribes of Israel, because we are a multitude, we cannot be measured, no number. He says, Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. You see who's, who's this talking about? Those that were appointed to be disobedient that we read in 1 Peter 2, verse 8. They were appointed to be disobedient to the laws of God. Read that again, verse 22. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 22. Go ahead. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. Meaning what? They were born to be put to death. That was their law. That was just for them. Everyone obeyed. They obeyed. They said they agreed to this. It says, let the multitude perish then which was born in vain. They were born just so they can be used as examples of what not to do. Go ahead. And let my grape be kept. Let my grape, singular, let my grape be kept. So you get a cluster of grapes. The Lord says, I'm not interested in the whole class. I only want one grape out of that one class. That's going into what? The elect. 
because the, the, the wickedness of men, the wicked outnumber the righteous on this earth tenfold. Understand it. Go ahead. And my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. For with great labor have I made it perfect because now we have to go through trial, we have to go through tribulation, we have to go through challenges. We have to, the Lord is testing us, is refining us. That's the labor for us to be perfect. You understand? So what we read in here is what? Is those spirits that were born in vain. Get second Ezra 8, verse 55 now. Second book of Ezra, chapter 8, verse 55. Go ahead. And therefore, ask thou no more questions concerning the multitude of them that perish. You see that thing? This, what, that's what we just read. Because well, chapter 9, he continues. He says, don't ask me any more questions regarding the multitude of them that perish. He says, don't worry about those that are going to drop dead and die because they were ordained, because they're not going to keep the law. You understand? Watch this. Read, read 2nd Ezra 9 verse 13. 2nd Ezra 9 verse 13. Because the same thing that he's saying here is the same thing that he said to Ezra in the next chapter. Read that. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 9 verse 13. Go ahead. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished. The and ungodly when... that will be punished is the multitude that were are born in vain. Go ahead. But inquire how the righteous shall be saved. You see that thing? He says, don't worry about those, the, 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 the spirits that are going to be, that are born or to be put to death. He says, worry about how the righteous will be delivered. Meaning, what is required of thee? Okay, before the, the most high God stand the hand. Read. Whose the world is, and for whom the world is created. The world was made and created for the righteous. Understand it. The world was not made for wicked Negroes or Negresses. No. The world is created for righteous Israelites. That's why he's saying here. He says, who the world is and for whom the world is created. The righteous. Not everybody. That's why there's a multitude that is born in vain. They are all going to be put to death. Go back to 2nd Ezra 8. Read verse 55 again. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 8 verse 55. Read. And therefore, ask thou no more questions concerning the multitude of them that perish. Right. For when they had taken liberty. It says, for when they had what? For when they had taken liberty, they despised on, the Messiah. Stop right there. It says, for when they had taken liberty, they despised the Messiah. What is the liberty? What is he talking about? Give me that in Galatians. Okay. Give me Galatians 5 and 1. When they had taken the liberty, what did they do? Galatians 5. Let's read verse 1. Watch this. Come on. Galatians 5 verse 1. Read that. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. Read. Then fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Read. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So the liberty that that, that, that came with Christ was that we are going to be freed from the law of sin and death, the law of animal sacrifice. Because Christ, he delivered us, he delivered us from that, from that old covenant of animal sacrifice. Because that didn't make us perfect. You understand? Get that in Acts 15 verse 10. The law of animal sacrifice could not make the black man and the black woman, the Israelite man and Israelite woman, perfect. As pertaining to the conscience. Okay, get that? Acts 15, verse 10. Let me show you what is called what they call the law of animal sacrifice. They mention it in Galatians, but there also is mentioned in Acts. Read that. The book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 10. Read. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? He says, Our fathers. And us, we, they couldn't bear this yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage, they are making reference to the law of animal sacrifice. As an example of what that means, just for a second, because the liberty that Ezra is talking about, is talking about the liberty that Christ would make us free from the law of sin and death. Get the book of Numbers, okay? Get Numbers. Get Numbers chapter 28 
the son of the son. I'm going to show you what Christ did for us that we are no longer under that law, the schoolmaster. Watch this. Numbers 28, verse 1. The book of Numbers, chapter 28, verse 1. So this is going to detail the sacrifices that we had to bring when we were under the law of sacrifice. Go ahead. The book of Numbers, chapter 28, verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire for a sweet savour unto me shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. So we must offer in due season based on how the Lord commanded us, right? Go ahead. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire which ye shall offer unto the Lord. Two lambs of the first year without spot day hmm. by day. We, so hold on. It says two lambs of the first year without spot day by day. That's everything. Two lambs, okay? The offering which is made by fire. This is a burnt offering. Two lambs of the first year without spot day by day. On a daily basis. Not only that, for a continual burnt offering, right? Go ahead. For a continual burnt offering, the one lamb shalt thou offer in the morning, mm. and the other lamb shalt thou offer at even. So one in the morning, one in the evening, right? Go ahead. And a tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering, mm. mingled with the fourth part of an hin of beaten oil. Wait. Really? It is a continual burnt offering which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savior, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. Now watch this. Remember, it says, one in the morning, one in the evening, for day by day, for a continual burnt offering, a lamb without for the first year that is without spot. Go ahead. And the drink offering thereof shall be the fourth part of an hymn for the one lamb. Hmm. In the holy place shall thou cause the strong wine to be poured unto the Lord for a drink offering. So you had a drink offering, you had a burnt offering, you understand? And guess what? And a meat offering too. Go ahead. And the other lamb shall thou offer at even. Read. As the meat offering of the morning and as the drink offering thereof, thou shalt offer it. A sacrifice made by fire. Of a sweet savior unto the Lord. So now we did, we just read about the lamb in the morning, the lamb in the evening, right? Watch this. Verse 9. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot, mm. and two tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, right? mingled with oil and the drink offering thereof. You see that thing? It says that on the Sabbath, it says you have two lambs of the first year without spot and two tenths deal of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil and the drink offering thereof. Go ahead. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath mm. beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. You see what he's saying? This is, that's what the, this is, this right here was the offering of the Sabbath day. It says, this is the burnt offering of every Sabbath besides the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. So do we have all this today? We don't have none of this. We don't have any of these things. We, are, we don't have land. We don't have livestock. You understand? And if you had the livestock, you are not going to be able to keep up with this. If let's say today you had the livestock, you are not going to be able to keep up. Because why? Because the temple is no longer. Christ is the high priest. He died for the 12 tribes. He became the ultimate sacrifice to die for the nation. So we no longer have to deal with that. So it's our reasonable plan. Go back to 2nd Exodus now, chapter 8. 2nd Exodus 8, read verse 56 again. 2nd book of Exodus, chapter 8, verse 56. Read. For, for when they had taken liberty, they despised the Most High. Mm hmm don't scorn of his law and forsook his ways. You see that thing? So that's why they are good. They were born in vain. Go ahead. Moreover, they have trodden down his righteous. Mm, the righteous is who? 
those that the Lord blessed, exalted, and sanctified, and brought and set near himself. You see that thing? The righteous, the good state. That's what he's talking about here when he says, and trodden down his righteous. When you keep the commandment, you are going to be hated by your family members, the people that know you. Go ahead. And said in their heart that there is no God, mm. yea, and that knowing they must die. You see that thing? It says what? They have said in their heart there is no God. They don't believe in the most high God. They believe in white Jesus. He says, yea, and that knowing, and that knowing they must die. They know that they go die. In the spirit, they know. That's why they live and behave the way they do, because they know in the spirit they're going to die. So they are trying to take as many people with them into the grave, to eternal damnation. Go ahead. For as the things are foresaid shall receive you, so thirst and pain are prepared for them. Meaning those that trod in the righteous. Go ahead. For it was not his will that men should come to naught. He says, it's not the will of the Father that men should come to naught. They need to die, come to nothing. Go ahead. But they which be created have defiled the name of him that hath made them. Mm. And were unthankful unto him which prepared life for them. Read that again. Second book of Exodus chapter 8 verse 60. Come on. But they which be created have defiled the name of him that made them. They've defiled the name of the Most High God by worshiping idols, right? And were unthankful unto him which prepared life for them. That, that's Israel for them. He says they were unthankful unto him which prepared life for them. Go ahead. And therefore is my judgment now at hand. He says, now I'm going to judge them. The judgment is written, it must come to pass. Go ahead. These things have I not showed unto all men, but mm. unto and a few like thee. Then answered I and said, Ray? Behold, O Lord, now hast thou showed me the multitude of the wonders which thou wilt, which thou wilt begin to do in the last times. But at what time thou hast not showed me? Okay, read that, read that verse again. I'm sorry, read that verse again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 8, verse 63. Go ahead. Behold, O Lord, now hast thou showed me the multitude of the wonders mm. which thou wilt begin to do in the last times. Stop right there. The multitude of the wonders is talking about what? You talk about the plague that you are seeing upon this earth. The diseases you are seeing upon this earth. The wars that you are seeing upon this earth. The uproars that you are seeing upon this earth. The evil that you are seeing. These are the wonders that must take place. Which we says, which thou shalt begin to do in the last time. Meaning the last day. Okay, but at what time thou hast not shown me one? At what time when the Lord returns, Ezra was not shown? You understand? Not only that, it was not shown when they are going to happen the exact date they said. You understand? Now watch this. Um, let's go back now. Chapter 33, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, and verse, read verse 15 again. No, no, read verse 12 again for me. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 12. Read. Some of them hath he blessed and exalted, and some of them hath he sanctified and set near himself. Mm -hmm. But some of them hath he cursed and brought low and turned out of their places. And turned, and ended what? And turned out of their places. And then out of their places, meaning what? They were born in vain. So now, what I'm showing you is that the spirit that we created from the beginning, even the be from the beginning before the Lord said, let there be light, the spirit was already created. You understand? And each one was given what? Was given um, a role to play. Everybody has a role to play. You just have to examine yourself to see which role were you ordained to play. Hmm. Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 now. Wisdom of Solomon, give me an example. Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 3. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 and verse 3. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10, verse 3. You know what? 
Start of verse 1. We're going to read that. Come on. Rosamond Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. Mm -hmm. She preserved the first formed father of the world that was created alone and brought him out of his fall. So now the first formed father of the world that was created alone, we talk about our forefather Adam. He says, and brought him out of his fall. Because what was Adam's fall? You listen to his wife Eve, you understand? And when he was brought out of his fall, that's when the Lord made coats of skin and clothed them. The blood of the blood of the animals, because that's when the law of animal sacrifice was introduced for them to repent. Okay? And teach their kids how to atone for their sin. Read on. And gave him power to rule all things. He gave Adam power to rule all things. Adam was a God on earth. Go ahead. But when the unrighteous went away from her in his anger, mm. he perished also in the fury wherewith he murdered his brother. Read that again, verse 3. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But when the unrighteous went away from her in his anger. The unrighteous is talking about who? Cain. Cain was the unrighteous who wisdom went away from him. Read. He perished also in the fury wherewith he murdered his brother. He says he perished also in the fury, the anger, the hatred wherewith he murdered his brother, his brother Abel. Watch this. Get Genesis 4 verse 1. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. You have to understand, think, uh, all spirits that are created on this earth, they were created good, they were good spirits, evil spirits, one against, the, uh, one against another, the godly against the righteous. Watch this. Genesis 4 verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. What? And Adam knew Eve, his wife, Mm -hmm. And she conceived and became and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. I have gotten a man from the Lord. So Adam and Eve, they have kids now. Go ahead. And she again bare his brother Abel. Mm. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain a tiller of the ground. So you've got Adam, you've got Abel, you've got Cain. Cain and Abel. Brothers, right? Brothers. Brothers. Brothers, I keep emphasizing that thing. Read that again, verse 2. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 2. She again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but mm -hmm. Cain was a tiller of the ground. So Cain was a tiller of the ground because kids, you have to give them child responsibility. So this was their responsibility. Go ahead. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Mm. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of, of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. The Lord had respect unto Abel's offering and to Abel and unto Abel's offering. The Lord respect those that keep his laws. Understand, understand. So here, what we have in here, you've got two things. You've got Cain, you've got Abel, okay? Is that in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. You see, although each one has their responsibility, but when it came to offering for sin, Cain, he brought, he brought what? He brought of the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. Hmm. Read verse 4 again. Of Genesis chapter 4, verse 4. Go ahead. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Wait. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So the question is, why did the Lord have respect unto Abel and unto his offering for when he brought the firstlings of his flock? Let's see. Get Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Let's see why the most high God was pleased with Abel's offering and he had respect unto Abel, but he did not have he was not pleased with Cain's offering which is the fruit of the ground read that, Genesis 3 verse 21 the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 21 go ahead, unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make 
coats of skins and clothed them. He made coats of skins and clothed them. Because this is after Adam and Eve had sinned. You understand? Adam listened to his wife. His wife, uh, Eve, brought philosophies to Adam. Okay? So now, the Lord is going to bring Adam out of his fall, like we read in the of Solomon 10. How did he do it? Read verse 21 again. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Mm -hmm. And to Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God, the, 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 did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them? He made coats of skin and clothed them. The coats of skin. Get that in Hebrews, okay? Get Hebrews 10. You know what? Let's read Hebrews 9. Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Because this is when the law of animal sacrifice was introduced in Genesis 3, after Adam and Eve had sinned. Read that in um, wisdom, I mean, Hebrews chapter 9. Um, read verse 12. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Go ahead. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So Christ did not, did not go, did not atone for us by the blood of bulls, of the blood of goats and of calves. But watch this, read verse 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh. So now it says, for if the blood of bulls and of goats. So the blood of bulls, the blood of bulls and of goats, guess what, that's the skin that we're reading about here. Um, that we're reading about in, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, when it says, And unto Adam and to his wife did the Lord go, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe and clothe them. The coats of skin goes into what? When the animal was slaughtered for atonement of sins, for blood to be spilled. You understand? For them to atone for their sins. So that's what it's talking about. You understand? So go back, Genesis 3, verse 21, again. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Because remember, the, during this time, Christ was not on the scene. So the reason why I'm reading Hebrews 9 is to show you the time where um, we, we were under the old covenant of animal sacrifice. We had to use the blood of animals to atone for our sins. That's why he says he made coats of skin and clothed them. Because the coats of skin, they come from what the animals that were slaughtered for use their blood as an atonement for our sins. Okay, read that, verse 21. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 21. Yeah. And to Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. He clothed them. He covered them with the, with the commandment. Okay? Now go back to Genesis 4. Genesis chapter 4. Um, read verse 4 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 4. And when Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fed thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So one thing you want to notice about our forefather Abel, he was obedient to his parents. Get that in Exodus 20, verse, 4, 20, verse 12. Exodus. He listened to his parents because, remember, the most high God taught Adam and Eve how to get atonement for their sins. In turn, they taught their kids. Cain, he didn't follow, he didn't obey his parents. But Abel, our forefather, did. Hmm. One of the spirits, one of the, the, the spirits of Cain is disobedient, is disobedience. The spirit of Cain is the spirit of disobedience. Understand that. Get that in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 12. Read. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You see that? This commandment right here is the first commandment with promise. So Cain, he disobeyed this law. He did not obey his parents, Adam and Eve. He decided, you know what? I'm not going to listen to that. So now when it's time for offerings, that's why he's bringing fruit and veggies, lettuce and bananas. You see that thing right there? Because why? He was appointed to that. Understand that? That was his law. He was appointed to be the devil. Now, 
go back okay go back to genesis chapter 4 now read verse 5 for genesis chapter 4 verse 5 mm -hmm. but unto cain and to his offering he had not respect wait and cain was very wroth and wait. his countenance fell you see that part right there it says, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. Meaning the Lord didn't respect Cain's offering of fruit and veggies. You understand? It says, um, it says, and Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. Now, I want you to understand. I showed you. The spirit of Cain is the spirit of disobedience. Disrespectful and disobedient to parents. You understand? The spirit of Cain is the spirit of disobedience. Not only that. The spirit of Cain is the spirit of what? The spirit of anger. That's the spirit of Cain. Because let me show you something. You see this part when it says, uh, and Cain was very wrong. You see, Cain has the spirit of Satan with the spirit of deflection. Instead of Cain taking responsibility and accountability, Cain, what did he do? He got angry. You see that thing? So he's using anger as a way to deflect so that he doesn't have to take accountability. Read that again. Verse 5. The book of Genesis chapter 4, verse 5. Read. And to Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. Mm. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So the spirit of Cain is the spirit of disobedience. That we read in 1 Peter 2, verse 8. They were appointed, he was appointed to be disobedient. The spirit of Cain is the spirit of anger. You understand? The spirit of Cain is the spirit of anger. The spirit of Cain is the spirit of anger. Understand that thing. So don't lose the thoughts. Watch this. Keep going. And the Lord said unto Cain. So you know what? Hmm. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 7. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 7. The spirit of Cain is the spirit of anger. Let's get that. In Ecclesiastes 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 9. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9. Go ahead. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. That was Cain's problem. He was hasty in his spirit to be angry. Go ahead. When the Lord checked him, instead of taking responsibility and accountability, Cain got angry. That's why it says, Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. Go ahead. For anger. Rested in the bosom of fools. Anger rested in the bosom of fools, meaning what? Their chest. That's where they are getting. They say man's strength is in his chest. The woman's strength um, is their center of gravity. I think is around the waist area and all that. So here what we're reading is, is that for anger rested in the bosom of fools. Hey, Cain was a fool. Cain was an idiot. He was appointed to that. Okay? Go back. Genesis 4, Genesis chapter 4, um, read verse, verse 5 again. The book of Genesis chapter 4, verse 5. Read. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. Mm -hmm. And Cain was very rough, and his countenance fell. Read. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? Why, why are you angry? That's the question the Lord is asking, so why are you angry for? Because that's a logical question to ask, okay? You were supposed to honor your parents. Your father and mother, you did not. You understand? Because they, they, they taught you how to offer. You didn't choose that love. So now you are sad because I don't respect your offering. I'm respecting your brother's offering. So the Lord is asking, what you mad for? Read that again. The book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wrath? And why is thy countenance fallen? Why is thy countenance fallen? Why are you making such a long face? You understand? Because Cain now was, well, you remember, the spirit of Cain is the spirit of disobedience and is the spirit of anger because it, Cain is deflecting so he doesn't have to take accountability and responsibility. So the spirit of Cain is the spirit of what? Excuses. That's the spirit of Cain. Okay, go ahead. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If you do well, meaning you keep my commandments, you do what I say, 
Will I not accept you? The Lord is asking, go ahead. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. If you don't do well, if you don't do what I say, if you don't do what I've commanded you on how to offer to get receive atonement, guess what? It's a sin lieth at the door. Because there's no blood that is going to atone for your sins. You will remain in the midst of sin. You will die in your sins. That's what the Lord is telling James. Go ahead. And unto thee shall be his desire. So your desire, meaning James' desire will be to worship the devil, Satan. Go ahead. And thou shalt rule over him. And Satan will rule over Cain. You see that? Satan will rule over Cain. So now what's happening here is, guess what? The Lord is given, he's giving Cain an opportunity to get himself right. You understand? That's what the Lord is doing. Go ahead. Verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. You see what happens next? The spirit, remember, the spirit of Cain is the spirit of disobedience. The spirit of deflection. The spirit of anger. The spirit of what? Hatred. That's the spirit of Cain. The spirit of Cain is the spirit of hatred. That's what we read here. Because it says in process of time, when he was talking to his brother, guess what happened? It says, Cain rose up against his brother and slew him. He killed his brother. Because that was the spirit. The spirit that he was holding in was the spirit of hatred. Such is some of you. The spirit of disobedience. Such is some of you. The spirit of anger. Such is some of you. The spirit of deflection and making excuses. The spirit of envy. Such is some of you. You have to examine yourself to see, are you appointed to this? Or can you overcome it? As it keeps coming up over and over. You have to sit down and examine yourself. Watch this. Um, give me the book of 1 John 3 verse 10. 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. Watch this. First book of John, chapter 3, verse 10. Go ahead. In this, the children of God are manifest. Now, hold on. The children of God are manifest. How do the children of God manifest? Hold this. Go back to Genesis 4. I'm going to show you how the children of God manifest. Genesis chapter 4, read verse 4. The book of Genesis chapter 4, verse 4. Go ahead. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Right. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. The Lord had respect unto Abel's of, uh, unto Abel and unto Abel's offering. Because why? He brought the offering that was taught to him by his parents. So he, uh, he observed the fifth commandment. Yeah, you, you see that thing? Give me that in Numbers. Numbers chapter 18, verse 17. Read that. The book of Numbers, chapter 18, verse 17. Read. The book of Numbers, chapter 18, verse 17. Read. But the first thing of a cow, or the first thing of a sheep, or the first thing of a goat, thou shalt not redeem. Mm -hmm. They are holy. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar, Is and shalt burn their fat. He says, thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar. The firstlings of a sheep, the firstlings of a goat, the firstlings of a cow. He says, don't redeem those, but you shall sprinkle their blood upon the altar. That's what was supposed to be done had Cain followed the right counsel. Okay, come on. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar and shall burn their fat for an offering made by fire. Hmm. For a sweet savior unto the Lord. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. You see, that's letting you know that Aram and they had an altar. They had the place where they did what? They performed burnt offerings during the time of Aram and Eve. So they had, they had the altar of burnt offerings. When we read in Leviticus, we read in Exodus, we read in Numbers, the Mosai is giving us the details design of the altar of burnt offerings and so forth. But they had it during the time of Adam and Eve. They had that. Who taught them that? The Lord did that thing. The Lord taught them. That's some heavy stuff. 
Did you finish that verse, verse 17? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go back. Genesis 4, read verse 4 again. The book of Genesis chapter 4, verse 4. And Abel, he also brought of the first thing of, of his flock and of the fat thereof. Mm -hmm. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Because they were able to sprinkle the blood of the firstlings of his flock, and they were able to bend the fat thereof for an offering made by fire for a sweet savor unto the Lord with Abel's offering. So that's how the children of God manifest. They follow counsel, they do it, they apply it. That's what our forefather Abel did. Watch this. Go back to 1 John 3. Read verse 10. First book of John, chapter 3, verse 10. Go ahead. In this, the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil. Stop right there. So in this, the children of God are manifest. We see how they manifest. That we read that in Genesis 4, verse 4. You understand? Um, it then says, and the children of the devil. Watch this. Go back to Genesis 4. Genesis, the fourth chapter. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 3. The book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 3. Go ahead. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Jump down to verse 5. He brought the fruit of the ground for an offering. Read verse 5. Verse 5. But Cain, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. Hmm. And Cain was very wroth, for his countenance fell. And his countenance fell. So Cain was angry, was upset. You understand? Because this is how the children of Satan manifest. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Mm. And why is thy countenance fallen? Wait. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. Mm -hmm. And if thou doest not well, Sin lieth at the door. Come on. And unto thee shall be his desire. And unto thee shall be his desire. Go ahead. And thou shalt rule over him. And Satan shall rule over you. And the children of the devil, that's how they manifest. Disobedience, anger, hatred. Now go back to First John 3. Go back to verse 10 again. First book of John, chapter 3, verse 10. Mm -hmm. In this, the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil. And the children of the devil also, they were manifest. Guess what? They were, the children, they were children of the devil back then. They are the children of the devil today. In this classroom right now, you, are, you have the children of the devil. Let me say it again. You have the children of the devil in the classroom. You have the children of the most high God in the classroom. But the Lord is telling you how they will manifest. The Lord is telling you how the children of Satan will manifest. The Lord is telling you how the children of God will manifest. We're giving you examples in Genesis 4 to see how to show you how the children of God manifest and how the children of the devil manifest. The children of God, they keep the commandments, they don't complain. They just do it. They don't have to keep doing evil things over and over. The children of Satan, they are disobedient. They are deflective. They keep, keep giving excuses. They have anger. They have hatred. They have envy. They are sneaky. They are slimy. They are slick. That, those are the children of Satan. Understand that? They lie. You understand? They are deceitful. That, those are the children of Satan. Understand now, keep going. Uh, first John 3, read verse 10 again. First book of John, chapter 3, verse 10. Wait, in this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, mm. whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. You see that thing? You don't do righteousness, you are not of God. You understand? Because we keep bringing things over and over again. Okay? Uh, the lust of the flesh, idolatry, lying, stealing, you understand, things, uh, so on and so forth, fornication, adultery, so on and so forth, 
the Lord is telling you right there. It says what? And whosoever doeth righteousness in those who keep the commandments, he says, they are of God. Go ahead. Neither he that loveth not his brother. He says, neither he that loveth not his brother. You don't love your brother, you the children of Satan. You hate your neighbor, you the children of Satan, you the child of the devil. And you are appointed to be there if you don't, if you can't repent from it. But only you know, it's between you and the Lord, only you know if you actually, actually want to do it or you just love being in sin. If whenever there's drama pop up, your name always comes up. Guess what? You are appointed to them. You are appointed for that thing. Understand? Okay. Go ahead. For this is the message that he heard from the beginning. That we should love one another. That we should love one another. We love one another by doing what we teach. We teach each other the laws of God. Okay, go ahead. Not as Cain. Stop right there. Not as Cain. You see what he's doing? He's referring bringing Cain back. He says, not, not as Cain, because what did Cain do? Cain, he slew his brother in process of time. He killed his own brother. Read that again. First book of John, chapter 3, verse 12. Read. Right. Not as Cain, mm. who was of that wicked one. Stop right there. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Remember, who was the, who was Adam, who was Cain's parent, Adam and Eve. But he's not talking about Adam and Eve. He says, Cain was of that wicked one. Who's the wicked one he's talking about? The spiritual demon Satan, the devil. Now, go back to Genesis 4, Genesis chapter 4, read verse 7 again. So we understand when it says, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, the spiritual demon Satan. Okay, read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 7. Go ahead. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted. Mm -hmm. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Right. And unto thee shall be his desire. Stop right there. Meaning Cain's desire will be to serve the devil. That's Cain's desire. Right. And thou shalt rule over him. And Satan will rule over Cain. That's why it says, unto thee shall be his desire. Meaning Cain's desire will be to worship the devil. That's why it says, not as Cain, you understand? Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Meaning who? The devil. Go back to First John chapter 3. Read verse 12 again. First book of John chapter 3 verse 12. Go ahead. Not as Cain. Who mm. was of that wicked one? Meaning the devil, right? And slew his brother. And he killed his brother. Remember, the spirit of Cain is the spirit of disobedience, the spirit of deflection, the spirit of excuses, the spirit of anger, the spirit of hatred, there's a murderous spirit also. The spirit of murder, the spirit, the violent spirit, that's the spirit of Cain. Understand that. That's the spirit of Cain. That's why it says, and he slew his brother. Why he's going to tell you why he killed his brother. Go ahead. And wherefore slew he him? Why did he kill his brother? That's what the apostle, the apostle John is asking. Why did he kill his brother? Go ahead. Because his own works were evil. Stop right there. Wait a minute. Because his, because he says, because his own works. His own works. His own works were evil. Wait a minute. Your works are evil, but you don't sit down to examine yourself. Instead, you hate, you kill your own brother. That's the spirit of Cain. The spirit of Cain is the spirit of lack of accountability and responsibility. That's what we're reading here. It is because his own works were evil. You see that thing? Because you cannot get yourself right, you're going to hate your own brother. You're going to keep pointing fingers at your own brother because you cannot get your mind right. Guess what? That's the spirit that exists up in the congregation right now. You understand? 
Because your own works are evil. Guess what happens now? You hate your own brother. Because that's what Cain did. And who was Cain was of that wicked one. Guess what? You roll in the spirit, you are of that wicked one. You don't serve the God of Israel. You serve Satan. Understand this thing. Read that thing again with Paul. First book of John, chapter 3, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. Mm. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil. Really? And his brother's righteous. You see that? Because his own works were evil, and, because, and his brother's righteous. So he, Cain was jealous. The spirit of Cain is the jealous spirit. The spirit of Cain is the jealous spirit. That spirit of jealousy. Sisters also, they have that same spirit. I'm going to show you that. Hold it. Give me a second. Exodus chapter 16. Okay. Second Exodus. Hmm. Sisters must be excited or that precept cannot be located. We will locate it. Give me a second. Uh, read that scripture again for me. Read it again. First book of John, chapter 3, verse 12. Go ahead. Not as Cain, who mm. was of that wicked one. Who was not of that one? Who was, who was of that one? Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Who was of that wicked one? Come on. And slew his brother. And killed his own brother. Go, go ahead. And wherefore slew he him? Why did he kill his brother? Read. Because his own works were evil. Because his own works were evil. Go ahead. And his brother's righteous. And his brother's righteous. Watch this. Give me second as a 16 verse 49. Second as a 16 verse 49. I'm going to show you something. The spirit of Cain is the, is the jealous spirit. The spirit of Cain is the envious spirit. The spirit of Cain is the jealous spirit. The spirit of Cain is the envious spirit. Okay, read that. Second Ezra 16, verse 49. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 49. Go ahead. Like as a whole envious and right, honest, and virtuous woman. You see that? Like as a whole envious, a right, honest, and virtuous woman. Sisters are good for that. Sisters, they like to do this stuff. Brothers, they also have the spirit, but in a sense that I just explained between Cain and Abel. Good against evil. You understand? Uh, good against evil. Um, sin, the sinful against the righteous. Like as a whole angel, a right, honest, and virtuous woman. Same thing. Same thing. Okay. Now, um, watch this. Is it because his own works were evil? I'm going to show you something. Give me give me 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Watch this. Read that for me. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 5. Read. Right. Examine yourselves. Stop right there. What did the Bible say? Examine yourselves. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Read that again. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 5. Read. Right. Examine yourselves. Examine yourself. Go ahead. Whether you be in the faith. Whether you are in the faith of the Messiah under the faith of Christ, right? Prove your own selves. Meaning test yourself whether you are of God, right? Know ye not your own selves? You don't know your own self? Yes, you do know your own self, but you should know your own self. You look at yourself in the mirror, and as soon as you leave, you forget what type of person you are that you are looking in the mirror. Go ahead. How that Jesus is in you, mm. except ye be, except ye be reprobates. 
He says, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except he be read for beginning, void of judgment. You make excuses. You cannot. You are always confused when judgment comes. You don't understand. That's why it says, except he be read for beginning. Good for nothing. Now, go back to where you were then. Remember, it says, examine yourself. Go back to 1 John 3. Read verse 12 one more again. First book of John, chapter 3, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, right? and slew his brother. Mm. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. So because Cain didn't want to, didn't examine himself. So Cain didn't examine himself. That was because his own works was evil. He used his own way, his evil works to do what? To kill his own brother so that he can take the attention off of the fact that his own works was evil. So he's escalated the situation. It was because his own works was evil and his brother's righteous. Get Revelation chapter 22, read verse 10 one more again. We read it earlier, but I want to show you something here. Okay, Revelation 22, read verse, four, read, read verse 10 once again. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Read. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Because guess what? Cain was unjust. Instead of examining himself, he decided to do worse. He became more unjust. You see that? It says, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Cain continued to be, to be unjust still. Right? And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. So Cain was filthy. He showed his own filthiness of the flesh. Okay, go ahead. His mind was corrupt. Ray. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Because Abel was given the commandment by his parents. Guess what? When the, when the situation came, he did what his parents commanded. You understand? And the Lord had respect unto Abel and unto his offering. Read. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Because he was just. He kept the commandment. Read. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. You see that? He gives uh, every man according to as his work shall be. But Cain's work was evil, and his brother's life. Because Cain did not examine himself. So the spirit of Cain is the spirit of lack of, lack of self-examination. That's the spirit of Cain. The spirit of Cain is the spirit of deflection. The spirit of Cain is the spirit of excuses. The spirit of Cain is the spirit of what? Deflection and projection. That's the spirit of Cain. Because that's what John is explaining to us here. You understand? Go back to 2nd Ezra 8. 2nd Ezra 8. Read verse 57. 2nd book of Ezra. Chapter 8, verse 57. Go ahead. Moreover, they have trodden down his righteous. They have, tro they have trodden down his righteous. Who said that those that are unjust and remain unjust still? The filthy ones that remain filthy still. They are the ones that trodden the righteous. That's what Cain did to his own brother. You understand? Genesis chapter 4, read verse 8. Genesis chapter 4 verse 8. Go ahead. And Cain talked with his brother. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. Mm. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. He killed his own brother. Because what who was Abel? Abel was the righteous. He was ordained to be a prophet from the beginning. Watch this. Give me Matthew 23. I'm going to show you what, he, this, what Cain did back then, and brothers are still are still are still working are walking around with envy, hatred in their heart, that murderous spirit, that jealous spirit, that envious spirit. Guess what? 
Let me show you how deep this goes. Matthew 23, read verse 34. I'm going to show you something. Start at, verse, start at verse 31. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 31. Mm, start at verse 30. Read. Verse 30. Mm -hmm. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. You see that thing? We were not going to be partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. See, in the killing of the prophets. Go ahead. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves mm. that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Stop right there. It says, whoa, 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 whoa. Is it Christ is heavy? It says, wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourself. Meaning, be witness unto yourself. You understand? That ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Meaning what? Your fathers killed the prophets. You are the children of those fathers that killed the prophets in the last, in the in, in in the beginning of time, from the beginning, from the time of Cain and Abel. Keep going. Watch this. Go ahead. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Is a fill ye up then the measure of your is a measure if is a fill up fill up the measure of what your fathers did by killing the prophets from the time of the beginning. Go ahead. Ye serpents, hmm. ye generation of vipers. He's kissing them out now. Go ahead. How can you escape the damnation of hell? The damnation of hell is what? Is the damnation of hell is eternal damnation where you're going to be, you, you're going to suffer death forever, but you're going to be alive. Suffering the pain forever. He says, listen, those that kill the prophets and the children of those that kill the prophets, guess what? They're going to suffer. They, they, they're not going to escape the damnation of hell. That's what it's telling me. Go ahead. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and hmm. wise men and Wait. scribes. Come on. And some of them ye shall kill and crucify. Hmm. And some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues. Go ahead. And persecute them from city to city. And persecute them from city to city. You want to follow them around to want to put them to death. Go ahead. Watch this. Read. Then upon you may come all the righteous blood. The book of Matthew, okay. chapter 23, verse 35. Go ahead. That upon you may come all the righteous bloodshed upon the earth. Stop right there. Hold on. It says that upon you, you children of those that killed the prophet, and because of what your fathers did, you doing the same thing. It says that upon you may come all the righteous bloodshed upon the earth. All the righteous blood of the, of the prophet that was spilled from the time of Abel. What's going to happen? From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, mm. son of Barakias, whom mm. he slew between the temple and the altar. Now, think about this here. From the time of Abel unto this day, 2022, the Most High Christ says, listen, you Israelites that have hated for your brother, you have the spirit of envy, anger, jealousy, hatred, that matter of spirit, the Lord says, guess what? You don't repent from that thing. You, he's going to charge you with the crimes of all the righteous prophets that was ever put to death on this earth from the time of Abel. Let that thing sink in. You hear what the Christ is saying? This is some heavy stuff right here. You understand? That's some heavy stuff. Because those that were saying crucify him, some of you are being here. You have to manifest. You might not know it, that you actually, you might be the one that was saying crucify him. How you know?
Read that again. Read verse 35 again. Watch this again. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 35. That upon you mm -hmm. may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barakias, whom he slew the temple and the altar. Come on. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. He says upon this generation. Which generation? The generation of these last days. He's talking about this generation that we're in right now. This generation. That's some heavy stuff right there. That's some heavy stuff what Christ is saying. Go back to First John now. First John chapter 8. First John chapter 3, read verse 13. First book of John chapter 3, verse 13. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world mm -hmm. hate you. He says, don't marvel when they see the world despise your God. Okay, come on. We know that we have passed from death unto life. Because we, we know that we've passed from death. Hold on. It says, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we now, we were dead in the world. The Lord revived us and woke us up. Now we are no longer dead spiritually. Now we are alive. Go ahead. Because we love the brethren. He that loves mm -hmm. his because brother. Because we love the brethren. Hold on. I need you to stay with me. It says, because we love the brethren. We love the brethren. That's why now we are no longer spiritually dead. Now the Lord has woken us up. That's why we bring out to teach our people the laws of God. Go ahead. He that loveth not his brother abideth. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Come on. If you don't love your brother, you abide. You know what it means to abide? You remain in death. What death is he talking about here? He's not talking about that regular death that you die when you age and you die. Mm -mm. He's talking about that eternal death. He's talking about that eternal death where you're going to feel the pain forever. That's what he's talking about. Here. Go ahead. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. You see that thing? Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. The spirit of Cain is a murderer spirit. Read. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Meaning what? You're not going to receive the kingdom of heaven and earth because you are going to be what? You will abide in this death that we're reading about in verse 14. Watch this. Give me Sarah 28 verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 28 verse 3. of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28, verse 3. Go ahead. One man beareth hatred against another. Stop right there. He says you bear hatred. You carry hatred. He says you bear hatred against another brother. You hate your neighbor. You don't apply the royal law. Go ahead. And that he seek pardon from the Lord. But you seek pardon from the Lord? You want the Lord to pardon you for your sins? Hypocrisy. Go ahead. He showeth no mercy to a man which is like himself. Mm -hmm. And doth he ask forgiveness of his own sins. Craziness. This is madness. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 28. I'm going to show you how demented Israel can be. We have to reset the mind of the Negro. Read that for me. Deuteronomy 28, verse 28. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 28. Go ahead. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness. That's, that's what's going on. The Lord has smitten you with madness and blindness of heart. Meaning you don't see that you cannot accept the Lord to pardon you for your sins, but you bear hatred against your own God. Go ahead. And astonishment of heart. Now you're going to be confused too. Astonishment, your mind is going to be astonished. Confused. Because the Lord is smitten you with craziness. Okay? So go back. You told me 28. Um, read verse 4 again. I mean, Sarah 28 verse 4. 
the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28, verse 4. Read. He showeth no mercy to a man which is like himself, mm. and doth he ask forgiveness of his own sins. That's crazy. But guess what? Israel is doing it this day. We fast, Negroes be fasting, brothers be fasting, but guess what? You don't you want the Lord to show you mercy, but you don't show mercy to your own brother. You jealous of your brother, you hate your brother, you envious of your brother, you have a murderous spirit towards your own brother, you think evil thoughts towards your own brother, you wish your brother was dead. Yeah, because that's what it is. Crazy stuff. Go ahead. If he that is but flesh nourisheth mm. hatred, you nourish it. You mean what? You nourish the thing. You water it. You take care of it. You protect. You protect the hatred. He says, "If he that is but flesh, meaning sinful, you nourish hatred. You can't seem to let it go." Go ahead. Who will entreat? For pardon of his sins. Who's going to entreat for pardon of, for, of your sins? Nobody's going to do it. Why should you, you have to die in your sin? Because you nourish hatred. you expecting us to entreat for pardon for your sins. No, you better die in your sins. Because you don't want to do what? You nourishing hatred. You, wanna, you don't want to let it go. What next verse? Watch this. Go ahead. Remember thy end. Remember your end. Read. And let enmity cease. Let the hatred stop. Let the envy stop. Let the jealousy stop. You understand? Go ahead. Remember corruption and death. Because you want to corrupt, you're going to be corrupt. Your body will corrupt and you will die. Go ahead. And abide in the commandments. Because when you abide in the commandments, you will live forever. Your body is not going to be corrupted. No, no, are you going to die? Go ahead. Remember the commandments mm. and bear no malice to thy neighbor. You see that part right there? Don't bear malice to your neighbor, meaning what? Don't have malicious intent towards your neighbor. Read. Remember the covenant of the highest and, the, and wink at ignorance. And wink at ignorance, meaning what? Ignorance of the laws of God. But now you're not ignorant. You know what the scripture does say. Understand it. Because if you don't, if you're still bearing malice to your neighbor, you don't let enmity cease, here's what's going to happen. Get that in Sarah 22 verse 9. Here's what happens when you hate your own brother, you hate your own sister, you understand? You have anger and hatred and envy towards your own sister. You smile to your sister, shalom, shalom, but you hate her God. That's some evil stuff. Read that. Sarah 22 verse 9. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22, verse 9. Read. If children live honestly mm. and have wherewithal, you have everything, you have what you need. You have what you need. Read. They shall cover the baseness of their parents. Meaning what? They're going to bring, they're going to give their parents honor when they are not even alive no more. Go ahead. But children being haughty. But children being disobedient. Children being evil, what do they do? Because like if they don't live honestly, because for you to live honestly, that means you obey, you are obedient to the laws of God. But if you are haughty, you don't live honestly, that's what you, you are appointed to be disobedient. Go ahead. Through disdain and hmm. want of nurture. And lack and lack of nature. Because what nature you? The laws of God nature you. Okay, go ahead. Do stay in the nobility of their kindred. Now you want to inspect your brothers and sisters around you because you evil as hell. You the devil, the Bible speaks of, you want to inspect your brothers and sisters that you see are trying to do their best to keep the laws of God. You see they are trying to be in the good books of the Heavenly Father. You want to inspect them with your poison. Hatred, jealousy, envy, anger, malice. That's why it says, let enmity cease. You understand? I'm going to show you some stuff. Watch this. Give me, um, give me Sarah chapter 8, verse 16. Ecclesiastes chapter, chapter 8, verse 16. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 16. Mm -hmm. 
Drive not with an angry man. You see that thing? Anger. Because this goes back to anger. Because Cain was angry. He says, strive not with an angry man. Go ahead. And go not with him into a solitary place. Meaning into a solitary place where it's just you and them. Because they will put you to death. Go ahead. For blood is as nothing in his sight. You see that thing? Remember it says when Cain was, was talking with his brother in the process when they were in the field, what did he do to his brother when they were in a solitary place by themselves? He killed his brother. That's what we're reading here. He says, and go not with him into a solitary place for blood is as nothing in his sight. He don't give a damn about what? Life. And that's what you see niggas today with guns wanting to kill the prophet. Go ahead. And where there is no help, he mm. will overthrow you. Because nobody is there to help you. He's going to over he's going to destroy you. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Get Sirach chapter 9 verse 13. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 13. Mm -hmm. Keep thee far from the man that has power to kill. You see that? He says, stay away from, from stay away from, stay away far from a man that has power to kill. Because the power that he has that is fueling him to kill you is what? Envy, jealousy, hatred, anger, malice. You see that thing? That's the power that is fueling him to want to put you to death. Go ahead. So shall, so shall thou not doubt the, the fear of death. So that you don't doubt the fear of death. You don't wonder if this person will put me to death. Go ahead. And if thou come unto him, Make hmm. no fault. You see that thing? You come unto him, make no fault. But because Cain does not know how to examine himself, guess what's going to happen? He's going to take, he's going to find fault. You look for evil, you'll find it. You understand? Go ahead. Lest he take away thy life presently. You see that thing? He's going to take away your life presently at that present time. Read. Remember. That thou goest in the midst of snares, mm -hmm. and that thou walkest upon the battlements of the city. The snares is talking about the wicked Negroes that want to kill you in the truth with, with, with uh, fringes and a bottle of blue. Yeah, with fringes and a bottle of blue. I'm going to show you that. Watch this. Give me Psalm 41. Some of you in La La Land. Psalm chapter 41. Read verse, read verse 6. No, no, start verse 5. Psalm 41, verse 5. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 41, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Mine enemies speak evil of me. Wait. When shall he die and his name perish? You see that thing? When you have that murderous spirit, this is the thing that the, this is the spirit of Cain is that murderous spirit, wishing death. He says, Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? That's what they meditate upon in their head. Go ahead. And if he come to see me, he hmm. speaketh vanity. You see that thing? He come to see you, they want to speak lies. How do they do it? Because they are in your presence, they are in your area, they are in your house, so on and so forth. Watch this. Read. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. You see that thing? They are looking for evil. They are looking for evil. They are looking for things to gossip about. Sisters do this stuff. Brothers do the same demonic stuff also. You can't make it up. Go ahead. When he goes abroad, he tells mm. them. You see that? When he goes abroad, they speak about they be running their black mouth. Read on. All that hate me whisper together against me. Mm. Against me, do they devise my hurt? They devise how they're going to hurt you. I'm talking about brothers with fringes and a bottle of blue. Talk about Shalom, both and Christ bless you. But in his mind, he's thinking, I hate this nigga right here. Oh, yeah. You know who you is? Go ahead. An evil disease, say they, mm. cleave fast unto him. You see that thing? An evil disease, say they, cleave fast. You wishing he can, that nigga can just, that your brother can just catch a disease and drop dead. Read on. And now that he lies, he shall rise up no more. He says, well, now that he's lying, lying because of a, of a disease, 
you hoping that you cannot get up. What's the next verse? Hmm. Keep going. Yea, my own familiar friend, hmm. in whom I trusted. You see that thing? My own brothers, who in whom I trusted, watch this. Which did eat of my bread. We did eat of my bread. Go ahead. Hath lifted up his heel against me. You see this thing? You see, the Bible is a true book. Keep going. But thou, O Lord, mm. be merciful unto me. Pray. And raise me up that I may requite them. You see what the, the, the daily terms make? It says, But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me. And raise me up that I may requite them. Meaning what? Bring forth vengeance. Go ahead. By this I know that thou favorest me. Mm. Because mine enemy does not triumph over me. That's some heavy stuff right there. By this I know that thou favorest me. Because my enemies does not triumph over me. Go ahead. And as for me, thou upholdest me in my integrity. Mm -hmm. And settest me before thy face forever. Go ahead. Come on. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Amen to that thing. Amen to that thing. Give me the right 27 verse 6. The right 27 verse 6. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 27 verse 6. Understand, understand. Just because somebody be smiling at you, don't think they are for you. Oh no. Don't be naive. Watch this. The right 27 verse 6. Okay. Because some brothers, they've got deep hatred. They just hide it with lying lips. Let me get there. In Proverbs. There's a scripture in Proverbs, they hate, they, they, they hide hatred with lying lips. There's a scripture for that, I think it's in Proverbs. Let me look at it, let me look at it. Hmm. Watch this thing right here. I know he's on the right. Yes, give me Proverbs 10 verse 18. Proverbs 10 verse 18. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 18. Go ahead. He that hideth hatred with lying lips. You see that? He that hideth hatred with lying lips. Shalom, brother. More than Christ bless you. More than Christ bless you. All praise to the Lord, brother. All praise to the Lord. But guess what? He that nigga be lying. Read again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 18. Mm -hmm. He that hideth hatred with lying lips. And he that uttereth a slander is a fool. You see that thing right there? The most I know, he knows the Negro. Now, track 27, verse 6. Read that. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27, verse 30. Mm -hmm. You know what? what? Before we, hold on. Before we get there, before we get there, watch this. Track 27, read verse 22. We're going to read down. Then we're going to jump. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27, verse 22. Read. Right. He that winketh with the eyes worketh evil. Mm -hmm. You see that? Again. He's saying the same thing in a different way in Proverbs. It says what? Read that again, verse 22. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27, verse 22. Read. Right. He that winketh with the, with the eyes worketh evil. He that winketh with the eyes worketh evil, meaning mischief. Read. And he that knows him will depart from him. If you know that type of Negro, if the Lord says depart from that type of brother or sister. Go ahead. When thou art present, he will speak sweetly. You see that? When you present, he'll speak sweetly of you. Go ahead. And, and will admire thy words. He will admire thy way. You know when you say something, they admire what you say. You understand? Watch this. Go ahead. Flat time. Flat time. Go ahead. But at the last, he will write his mouth. He will write his, he will run his black mouth. Read. And slander thy sayings. And slander thy sayings. Speak evil. That's what we just read in South 41. Go ahead. I have hated many things, but nothing like him. Mm. For the Lord will hate him. You hear what the Lord said? Read that verse again, verse 24. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 27, verse 24. Read. Really? I have hated many things, but nothing like him. Mm. For the Lord will hate him. So what's the spirit behind this wicked Negro or wicked Negress? Because the sisters are not absorbed from this. The sisters are also part of this thing. Read the stage. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27, verse 30. Read. Malice and wrath, even these are, abomin are abominations. Mm -hmm. And the sinful man shall have them both. You see what they come. We see what the root cause of all this is sin. Is that and the sinful man shall have them both. The sinful man has wrath and malice. The spirit of Cain is the spirit of malicious intent. That's the spirit of Cain. The spirit of Cain is the spirit of wrath. Watch this. Give me Ephesians four verse thirty one. This is how you get rid of this demonic stuff. These demonic and evil spirits that are bequeathing onto brothers and sisters. Ephesians 4. Read verse 31. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 31. Mm -hmm. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. You see that thing? So malice is the root cause. Malice has bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor evil speech because all of which they are they have what they have malicious intent among them so the, the root cause is malicious intent these things are designed to cause harm and destruction next verse go ahead and be kind one to another mm -hmm. tender hearted forgiving one another doing what forgiving one another doing what Forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. Go ahead. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has, has forgiven you. You see that thing? That's what we read in Thracian week. That goes back to that. Give me Colossians 3, verse 12. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Read that. The book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Put on, therefore, as the... You know what? Start at verse 8. Start at verse 8, we're going to read down. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 8. Read. But now ye also put off all these mm -hmm. anger, mm. wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. You see what the Bible is saying? The Lord, this is repentance right here. He says, but now he also put off all these. He says, put these things off. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Go ahead. Lie not one to another. Come on. See that you have put off the old man with his deeds. So because the old man, these things, they are part of the old man. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication with evil speech. Like we read in Surah 27, verse 22, thou, yes, that's filthy communication. It says, lie not one to another, see that ye have put off the old man with his, with his deeds. The deeds of the old man is what we read in verse 8. Go ahead. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So now he says you must put on the new man, meaning because you are born again now, you keep in the commandments, you bethink yourself. Okay, go ahead. Jump down to verse 12. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 12. Read. Right. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, mm -hmm. holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. So you see what we're reading here? These are the things that the Lord says, as the elect of God, we must put these things in our spirit. He says we must be holy, okay, because we are the beloved of God, spouse of mercy, we must have mercy one for another, kindness, humbleness of mind, be humble down to what the Bible says, meekness, long suffering, that goes into patience, come on, verse 13. Forbearing one another, Meaning, we must carry each other's burdens. We must help one another. Come on. And forgiving one another. 
He's repeating the same thing again. Go ahead. If any man have a quarrel against him, mm -hmm. even as Christ forgave you, also do, do ye. You see what he's saying? He says, if you have a quarrel against your brother, you have ought against your brother, you have a problem with your brother, the Lord says, he says what? He says, forgive your brother, okay, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Hold this. Get that in Ecclesiastes 28, verse 2. Chapter 28, verse 2. Of Ecclesiastes chapter 28, verse 2. Go ahead. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he hath done unto thee. Mm -hmm. So shall thy sins also be forgiven when thou prayest. You see that thing? That's the same. That's what we read. It says, forgive your neighbor the hurt he's done unto you. And so shall thy sins also be forgiven when thou prayest. Go back, Colossians 3. Okay, read verse 13 one more again. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against him, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Wait. And above all these things, put on charity. Do what? And above all these things, Put on charity. Put on charity. That's love your neighbor as yourself. That's charity. Go ahead. Which is the bond of perfectness. Which is the bond of perfectness. Because charity, when you love your neighbor as yourself, guess what? That is the bond of perfectness. What is the perfectness? Get that in Ephesians 4. Because the laws of God is for the perfecting of the saints. Okay? To perfect us as a nation. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse, verse 11. Because the Lord would bring different spiritual gifts in the body for the perfecting of the saints. Read what you got. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Read. And he gave some apostles Come and on. some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Read. For the perfecting of the saints. Mm -hmm. for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ you see that for the edifying of the body of Christ so everything that we just went over the Lord says we must put these things away we must put them off in 1 Peter 2 verse 1 first book of Peter chapter 2 verse 1 mm -hmm. wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies, and envies, and mm. all evil speakings. You see, read that again. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 1. Wait. Right. For laying aside all malice, and all guile, mm -hmm. and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speakings. So, this is a commandment. He says we must put these things away. We must put them malice, guile, hypocrisies, envies, and evil speech. That's the, that's the same thing the Apostle Paul was addressing in Colossians chapter 3. It's the same thing. Same thing. Read again. I want this thing to go to get home. Read. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 1. Come on. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. Once these things, the ones you get rid of this, the ones you, these things are examined. Once these things are dealt with in sincerity and in truth, here's what happens next. Next verse. Go ahead. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the world that ye may grow thereby. Then, then growth will take place. Then spiritually you are going to grow. But as long as you don't get rid of these things, you will remain a spiritual midget. Give me the book of, let's go back now. Track 33. Chapter 33, read verse 14 and 15 together. You know what? Read 12. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Some of them hath he blessed and exalted, and some of them hath he sanctified and set near himself. Read. Really? But some of them hath he cursed and brought low mm. and turned out of their places. 
You see that? So you have to ask yourself, which one are you? Which one are you? Which one are you out of these? Are you the one that is blessed, exalted, uh, sanctified, and brought near unto the law? Or you are cursed and brought low and turned out of your place? Meaning what? You are, you are ordained to be the devil or you are ordained to be the prophet. You need to ask yourself that. That can only take place if you self-examine. Understand that thing. I'm going to end the class right there. All praise to the Lord. I'm going to end the class right there. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen.